started Eco Shop as it was a piece of land, it still is a piece of land in Joshua Tree. It's a seven acre site with two small little homesteader cabins on it that I bought in 2002 for, I mean, a kind of hilariously small amount of money. And the premise was that we could experiment on the site with small, green, light, portable infrastructure uh, under the premise that everything we were building was way too heavy and way too complicated. And that in the desert, you could explore a lighter way of living, perhaps off the grid, perhaps not off the grid. And I, it was a design lab. It wasn't meant to be anything in particular except just an area for experimentation. I'm showing this right now. This is, this is a shot of Lisa Ann Auerbach's tract house. She's an artist um, who asked me to create a tract for her. The cover of that tract was lightened up, as you saw one slide ago. These are all the tracks. These are religious tracts, or it's a spin on religious tracts. I wrote a tract for her. And I wrote it about basically the ideas behind EcoShack, so I just show it as an efficient way to tell you what the ideas of EcoShack are. Uh, you can read that, but I just, <laughs> it's not that complicated. I just don't like concrete, and I don't like things that are heavy, and I don't like things that are controlling, and I don't like people that tell me what to do, and I have all these issues around it personally. <laughs> And so I kind of, all that stuff like seeps into my work. So EcoShock is very much about freedom and freedom of, of infrastructure and lightening up how we live as an act of freedom. And you know, that's continuing, you know, I'm continuing to explore that. So here's a shot of the site. This is what EcoShack looks like in Joshua Tree. Those are guys who made a, a very nice project. They came from London to spend 10 days with us at EcoShack and made a beautiful little project called Thermal Wing, which you can see online. Um, it's a beautiful site, obviously a beautiful view. That's not even, that's barely the view. It's got a much wider view than that. And after three or four years of working on that site as a love project, truthfully, I couldn't make any money out of it. Not that I've made that much money since then, but still, it was not, it was not tenable. I couldn't have it as my full-time job. That's the shack. That's the green shack. That's, the, that's how I named Eco Shack. Uh, it's a small green homesteader cabin, painted green in 1955 and never painted again. And it's green, so it's like green. We're looking at green. Remember in 2002, there was no such thing as a green architect. There had been green architects in 1971. There were not green architects in 2002. Uh, but I started looking at green and sustainability as part of what I'm telling you I was looking at, and so I named this site EcoShack because we were looking at that, and that is the shack, and I was there three days ago working on something inside of it. Um, but what happened pretty quickly was I needed to have an economic logic for EcoShack, or else I couldn't keep doing it. This is what I mean about economics. They really do kind of structure your lives. So you got to look at it closely, e economics. It, it matters. Economics matters. So I wanted to keep doing stuff like this and making and experimenting and, you know, like playing in the desert. Who wouldn't want to do that? But what happened, and I am an entrepreneur, so I like it when things like this happen. What happened was everybody kept saying to me, um, I want an eco shock. And I'd always say, eco shock is not a thing, it's a place. And they were like, no, I, it's a, clearly it's a thing, it's an eco shack, I want one. So like, really, like a lot of people ask me this. So I decided that in fact, I could go into the business of making eco shacks and that that could be a viable business. So I dropped everything else I was doing and did that. This is a student project that was constructed on the site last year um, that kind of typifies, there's a few that I'm gonna show right now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but it kind of typifies the kind of things we work on out there. This is green, it's a green experiment about things to do with shading and so on. It's, it's, to get students to actually fabricate successfully at this level is kind of hard. This is kind of cool looking, you know. Here's another thing that's on the site right now. Experimental small structures, I think you guys get the idea. Um, so I decided that to monetize EcoShack, I could create EcoShacks. And so I started to look for an opportunity to make an eco shack and what is an eco shack. And so I decided that I would not just make one thing that was an eco shack, but I would just look at small 
typologies and reinvent them under the EcoShack brand. And so the first thing I did was look at the yurt. And I don't know if you know what a yurt is. I'll show you in two seconds what it is. The yurt is a portable structure invented in Mongolia. And Mongolians both lived in them and also traveled with them. They could fit on the back of a camel, the yurt. And I got very intrigued by it. This is our EcoShack yurt. Uh, it doesn't look like the old school yurt because I reinvented the yurt, but it's similar. I got very intrigued by the lightness of the yurt and the mobile quality of the yurt, the fact that it's a circle, the fact that it's uh, very authentic in its grassroots kind of evolution. It was just made locally by people in a very informal way. It's also very, very smart structurally. And I got very intrigued by how people could live in these small structures uh, that could pack down. So here's a yurt on the left, and you can kind of see the references I brought back into my own yurt, and also, you know, I evolved it. You know, yurts don't typically have floors, ours has a floor. There's a number of things that I changed. As you can see, they can ride around on your car. Yurts have a frame, and they have sidewalls that pack down. Oh, you can kind of see how they work. I got very intrigued by how complex structures can actually fold. This is a basket from the Philippines that opens and closes um, in a way that's kind of unexpected that has to do with how the joints work. So I used this and I combined that with the trip to the Philippines to study bamboo and rattan. And I combined all those things that happened to me a couple, three years ago into one meta project, which is this yurt inspired by this basket, made out of bamboo, so it would be green, and EcoShack's first product that I would actually put on the market. So that's kind of the premise. I developed some different um, framing ideas that you see here. This is a little bit like too much architecture, perhaps. This is the last side of architecture, I promise. Uh, and the lower left-hand one is um, the one we actually chose and put into production. It's a factory in Mexico. The funny thing is I tell this story, there are times that I could just make a whole lecture on what happened with EcoShack. I'm not making that lecture tonight, partly because EcoShack is kind of old news because this business failed, uh, or at least I put it on hold, and I'll explain that in a second, but I became a manufacturer and it took me two years to figure out how to A, design something for production, B, find someone to make it, C, put it into production, D, sell it to people, E, find people who would buy it at that price point, and so on and so on. It was the learning curve of all imaginable learning curves, which I'm now at the end of, at least on that one. And you can see it in production. It's, a, it's an impressive thing as an architect even to kind of make a product for the market, make it in multiple, find a Mexican factory who you trust who can make it for you at the price point that you need it made, make it green, solve all these problems and so on, have no money and have all of that. So, it seasoned me as an entrepreneur, and I actually am talking about it in this lecture for that one and only reason, that to engage ideas that take shape in the real world, you actually do need a set of skills that involve, again, I'm harping on this, I recognize that, that involve economics. There needs to be an underlying logic for what you do, and if you can be entrepreneurial, just, I'm sorry, I need to see that a million times, that's the interior. That was our website where we sold other products and so on. If you have an entrepreneurial bent, that's great. Cultivate that. If you have other kinds of ways of engaging our world, that's great because you'll need that, right? And so I'm just showing you what my operations of engagement are, right? So here, here it is installed, you can get the scale of it, that's at Fred Siegel, I don't know if you know, if you're from LA, you know what Fred Siegel means, but you know if you're not from there. Um, so, as I said, that project, EcoShack itself, is now still a design lab, I'm still in the desert a lot, but the manufacturing side of EcoShack is on hold. That Mexican factory I showed you a picture of failed six months ago. The economic logic for expensive green shelter products became not a tenable economic logic in 2009, as so many other economic logics are not.